Now, this is an interesting mouse because this mouse has a mutation in a gene which, uh, which not surprisingly, is called the obese mutant. And it turned up, it must be a long time ago now, it must be 15 years ago, um, uh, it turned up 15 years ago in a laboratory stock. Um, and if you've got two copies of this gene, uh, uh, you get morbidly obese. And this animal is morbidly obese. It's kept in its cage, treated well, um, and uh, it gets as fat as this. Very occasionally, very occasionally indeed, um, children are born with this condition. And here we have a picture of a boy, young boy, uh, missing the hormone involved. It's a hormonal um, thing called leptin. And uh, the young boy, as you can see, is missing the hormone on the left. That's before treatment. And afterwards, the, he's been injected, given leptin treatment, and it's more or less cured. And leptin is what we call a satiety hormone. We're all familiar with the sensation of hunger, and that's a hormonal sensation. Um, I have to say, uh, I'm, uh, I'm enjoined by my employ employers at UCL to put in an advertising break um, every half an hour into my lectures about how wonderful UCL is. And in fact, the very first uh, hormones were discovered at UCL, and they were appetite hormones. Okay, So insulin is uh, an appetite hormone. When your blood sugar drops, when it drops, the insulin tells you, go out and get a cheeseburger, go out and get a Coca-Cola, Okay, and you do it. But less familiar is the notion of satiety, that you go and get your cheeseburger, you might even have two cheeseburgers, but you don't have ten, because you have a separate series of hormones, leptin being one of them, and there are others called ghrelin and the like, which say, okay, enough is enough, you don't want any, any, you don't want any more food. This bloke, this kid, and the mouse, are missing leptin, so if there's any food available, they're hungry all, hungry all the time, and this boy, without question, it's hellish for their parents, because their baby is genuinely starving, hungry all the time, and screams and begs for food, and it's very hard to turn him down. Um, and that's because he perceives himself as not having eaten enough. Um, and uh, but th this is only important where there's plenty of food. For a wild mouse, for example, or it doesn't live in a nice warm laboratory cage with tons of food, um, if you've got a leptin deficiency, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make much difference because you're not going to be able to find enough food to get fat. If you were to go back to the days of uh, hunger in Britain, it would be just the same. If you had leptin deficiency, too bad, you'd be hungry, but you'd stay hungry because you wouldn't find enough food. So it is a nature-nurture thing. However... Things in the last couple of years have become rather more tangled. Um, here's a mutation in a mouse. It's, an, it's like it's, it's, it's the Prince Charles mutation to some extent because check out his ears, all right? Uh, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not going to particularly talk about the ears. I'm going to talk about another mutation which our friend Mickey, widely used to sell junk food, needless to say, our friend Mickey has got this mutant. If you look at his, his hands, he's only got three fingers and a thumb on each hand. And presumably, although he's rather shy about his feet, he's only got three toes and a big toe on his feet. And there is a mutation in mice called FTO, which stands uh, uh, plonkingly for fused toes. Um, and if you've got this mutation in mice, you get to your, to your toes fused together. So big deal, I hear you say. Well, fair enough, big deal. It, if you find the mutation in mice or any other creature, you can search for it and find it very readily in the human genome. It would take you five seconds. You type it in, to, you have to type it in, but you type it in, and there it is. We have the same gene, and we have the same error as what causes fused toes in mice. But bizarrely, in humans, the fused toes error in mice does something completely different because it's an appetite gene. Okay. That just reminds me how little we know about genetics. What the hell is going on there? Nobody knows. Okay. So um, about a third of the people in this room have got two copies of the amino acid, uh, of the, base, the DNA base called A, at a particular site in this really rather large gene, uh, just one DNA uh, change. About a third, a bit less actually, have got two copies of T, and the rest of us are intermediate. Now, if you're AA, you weigh on average about two kilograms more than somebody like me, who is TT, okay? So this gene was discovered, and people assumed that it was something to do with your digestive system and so on, but it isn't. It's actually a gene uh, that's active like many others involved in this issue, and that's just one of many such genes that we now know. Where are they active? They're active in the brain. Okay, we know many genes like this now. Uh, they don't work in the digestive system. Um, they don't work in the immune system. Uh, they work in the brain, and that's where the that's where the issues is. It's appetite. Some people quite genuinely have a much bigger appetite than others, 
And in an environment where they can satisfy that appetite, they're at much, much greater um, uh, danger of, um, of obesity. So the cure, if there is a cure, is to eat less. I remember, um, I remember uh, Sidney Brenner, who's a, who was the cleverest of the Watson Crick Brenner Benzer group. I mean, Brenner's got a brain like a planet. He's still around. And Sidney telling me once, you know, they say they found the gene for obesity. I know what the gene for obesity is, and only for years, it's the one that makes you open, it, you open your mouth. Um, and he was dead right. We didn't realize how right he was. But that's it is. It's a hunger gene. So that's what lies behind this particular very important epidemic. Um, the uh, gene, which has been around for years, um, now is in an environment where those at risk can actually succumb to the risk, become obese, get diabetes, and die young.